Isaiah 66, the last chapter of Isaiah said, This is what the Lord says, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is a house you will build for me? Where is my resting place be? Has not my hands made all these things? Has not my hands made all these things? And so they came into being. This is the one I will look to. On him who is poor and is contrite in spirit. And who trembles at my words. He who kills a bull is as if he slay a man. He who sacrifices a lamb as if he breaks a dog's neck. He who offers grain offering as if he offered swine's blood. He who burns incense as if he bless an idol. Just as they have chosen their own ways and their souls delight in their abomination. So will I fear choose their delusions and bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, no one answered. And when I spoke, no one heard. But they did what is evil before me. They chose that which I do not delight in. This is so clear that God is not after our sacrifice. He's not after our money. He's not after our works. He's not after... Uh, what we can do for God. It's not even after our ministries. Anything that you're doing that is not done in the word or done in Christ, you're doing it in vain, my friends. God is saying, basically, heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. So he has everything, isn't it? So what is it that you can give a God that owns heaven and the earth. Anything that is on the earth is his. He made it all. And he said, you know, don't try to build me a place to rest. Where's the place you're going to build for me? Where's my resting place? He said, all these things are mine. So don't try to... How He said, basically, wake up. You can't, even if the heavens, the highest heaven, cannot contain God. How are you going to build me a house on earth to contain me? He said, um, let's face reality. It won't work. <laughs> then he said something very interesting here, and I want you to listen very carefully. But to this one will I look. When I first read this scripture, I said, oh, yes, Lord, I want to be this one. And I began to look very, very careful on what God is saying. To this one, I will look. He is looking at you and everyone who this man will I look, or woman, will I look who uh, on him who is poor, and of a contrite spirit and trembles at my word. Very simple. The poverty um, is the same thing Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there's the kingdom of heaven. You see, you and I need to be very poor in spirit. We need to have poverty in our spirits. Um, the opposite of having poverty in our spirit is just to have pride in our spirit. We feel like we know it all and we feel that no one can teach us. We need help, brothers and sisters. We don't know it all. And so God is saying, I'm, I will look on the man that is poor in spirit. The one that realizes that I need help from God. The one that realizes that and the trembles at my word. The one that fear God. I believe the fear of God has gone away far from the church. And I've been praying and asking God for the spirit of the fear of God. And I'm seeing how God is opening my eyes to see how far I have come. 
You see, God is not your best friend or your buddy. He's not your mate. He's God. We need to fear God and tremble at his word. We need to respect God. We need to keep the fear of God right before our eyes. And when we do that, God will look to us. And he will bless us. May the grace of God be with you. Amen.